Hello, thank you for joining me for this latest video. And again, I offer to all of you to please subscribe to be notified when the latest videos do become available. Today, I like to speak about the gospel that we had in church on Wednesday of the 14th week. And it, that gospel from Matthew chapter 10 spoke about our Lord speaking to the apostles and telling them to go out to all people. And he said, most importantly, we have to go and look for the lost sheep. This is a very major issue in the faith relationship. We, those who are faithful, those who are seeking God and wanting a closer relationship with God, need to go ahead and lend a hand to those who may have fallen away, those lost sheep. They may be our own family members, people that, you know, we grew up, you know, as brothers or sisters, and maybe they're not going to church, they're not practicing, or even worse, not even believing in God. That, unfortunately, is something that's happening more and more amongst families of all different faiths. That is so unfortunate because it really is broad-based. The other factor is it could be not just the people that we grew up with in our own house. It could be other family members. It may be friends. It may be associates. It may be people we work with or those who we go to school with. Those people that sometimes have just fallen away, or again, even worse, have given up on God. We see even those who, you know, we may have seen in church that we don't see anymore. And sometimes those people have fallen away, not because maybe they have given up on God, but they may have given into one of those capital sins called sloth or laziness. You know, I don't need to come to church. I don't need to go ahead and practice. There could be nothing further from the truth. Why we go to church, why we practice, and why we want a faith relationship? Well, let me just give you a few reasons. First and foremost, when I have a faith relationship with God, it helps this relationship that I have somebody I could speak to. Somebody I could, you know, speak to in the middle of the night, when I'm driving in the car, when I may be at the most saddest part of my day or the happiest part of my day. I can reach out by simply saying, God, thank you for giving me life. I adore you. Thank you for giving me so much. In fact, thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die on the cross. He died on the cross for you and for me to have eternal life to be able to have the opportunity to reach that pinnacle of why we all should be existing, and that is to get to heaven. The pinnacle in life is not to get to the highest position in an office or a job or any other kind of organization. It is not, the pinnacle is not to be, you know, that I'm gonna be somebody in this different grouping, or maybe even that I'm gonna be a dad or a mom, even though those are great vocations and something that we always need to support. The ultimate though for us, all of us, is not the job or the family, it's being in heaven with God because Jesus opened the gates of heaven for us. So the first thing is I wanna have a faith relationship. I wanna to come to adore you God for everything you give me. You've given me everything from the air that I breathe, to the night and day outside, to the water I may drink, to being able to have the different functions and being able to have the different senses. You have given that to me. Thank you. And that is one of the first steps in prayer. So adoration. Another factor of why I want this faith relationship with God and why I want to come to church is because I develop not only a stronger relationship with God, but with one another. That is so very important. That's the horizontal part of the cross. What did our Lord Jesus do? He spread his arms out to reach out to everyone, that no one gets excluded, no one from any religion, no one from any other you know, social background, any other race. Everybody is one in God's eyes, 
and God loves us all. And when we join in church, we pray and we give thanksgiving to God. We also come with our petitions and needs, but we also go ahead and join one another in praying together as a community. So that's why another reason our relationship with God is so important. Third, another reason why that relationship with God is so very important is it makes us a better and stronger person. If it's the Gospels that we hear from or the different readings or maybe the words that are said at the Holy Altar, receiving the graces in the Catholic Church when we come forward to receive Holy Communion to help us to ward off the evil one and all his temptations. Maybe it's helping us by hearing the word and receiving communion that I become strengthened in what our Lord is expecting of you and of me. Those are things that help us on our journey in our life. There is no doubt, life is challenging and has difficulty. Remember, if there was no difficulties or challenges, we would all be in heaven right now. But we're not in heaven. We're put through the tests, we're put through the challenges, and especially in this year, 2020, we are seeing many difficulties and challenges. But those are things that are in front of us that will only make us stronger if we listen to our Lord and we go ahead and live what our Lord would expect from us. So what is it helps us also is being people of strong faith, trusting in God, believing in God, asking God for courage that I have the strength and fortitude to continue in my daily life. Another thing is to be people of hope. Don't give up on God. Yes, sometimes things may not go the way we would want. Maybe something has happened dramatically in our lives. Maybe we became sick or we have someone else in the family who's ill. Somebody may have died. Or we may see things in the world and we may say, oh, forget it, I'm not going to go ahead and believe. No, no. We have seen time and time again, if we read the Gospels, those first four books of the New Testament, we see time and time again how our Lord reached out to those who were in need, those who were ill, helping those who were sick, those who may have died or possessed, and to go ahead and to heal so thus, we need to be people that go ahead and believe and trust in God. Because if we don't, how can we expect for it to happen? We need to go ahead and believe that God will get us through those bumps that we have in life, the things that we may see, and to make us stronger and better that I don't fall into those same traps, that I don't go ahead and do bad things simply because somebody else did bad things. Two wrongs never make a right. So we really need to be people of hope. So faith and hope, and the third is love. I mentioned before that horizontal relationship that when we come to church, we go ahead and we pray with one another and we pray to God and asking for his help. And that I go ahead and move myself, move myself spiritually inside of me, the internal part of my soul, to come and thank you, God, for everything you offered to me. I love you, God. You went ahead and didn't have to go through all that suffering, but you did for me. You did it because you love me. And all you're asking of me is to not only love you and do what you showed me what to do, to live those gospels, to be able to live his word, to be able to go ahead and foster and, you know, harmony, but go ahead and to love our neighbor, to go ahead and join us together as one. See, we could do it, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to go out there and be ones to bring the lost sheep from our families, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools, back into the fold. Invite them to come back to church. And if you're watching this and you're saying, mm, maybe I should, well, then you should come because Jesus loves us. Jesus died for us. Jesus wants us. And with our Lord, all things are possible. With our Lord, we become better people. 
I want to thank you for joining me for this video today. Become stronger in your faith. Love God and one another. Be people of hope, because with God all things are possible, and our better days that lie ahead are all with God. May God bless you on your journey, on your day. May you be the good shepherd in doing his work to go out and spread the message of God, who is the ultimate good shepherd, and to bring others back into the fold. Let's spread the message together. Our Lord Jesus is alive. He's here for us. God is here, the sanctifier and the paraclete. May we now have the voices of fire to go ahead and to spread that message and bring others to that same joy that we should be feeling inside. God bless you, and thank you for joining me.